Hi, it's Richard Dwyer of richarddwyer.com and uh, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. I'm a civil attorney, a divorce attorney in Mountain View, California. Let's discuss the allegations that have been made by Vanessa Tyson, an associate professor, against Justin Fairfax, the Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just say, Without getting into specifics, the accusations made by Professor Tyson are terrible. Right? They they really are awful. I don't know what happened in that hotel room in two thousand and four. Right? Anyone watching this video should realize that, you know, I'm in the dark on what happened. But, there actually is a fact that might help us unravel it. There's a factual discrepancy between the accuser's version of events and the accused version of events. Professor Tyson states that after the sexual assault she never spoke to Fairfax again. Right? Very definitive. Never spoke to Fairfax again. Now Fairfax in his statement where he's claiming that everything was consensual in other words, he admits that something happened. He's claiming, though, that he had consent and the mood in the room was radically different. But Fairfax goes on. And Fairfax makes the claim that she stayed in touch with him for months. Right? That's the claim. That she stayed in touch with him for months. Folks, it can't be both. Either the accuser never spoke to him again, or the accuser stayed in touch with Fairfax for months. Now understand, they meet at the Democratic National Convention in 2004. They didn't know each other. So, my challenge to the press, my challenge to the excellent group of people who do crime podcasts online, my challenge is to question Fairfax because he's the one making the claim that they stayed in touch for months. Question Fairfax about how they stayed in touch. Get behind his prepared political statement. Right? If he's claiming that they kept in touch by phone ask him for his phone records. Right? Ask if he will allow the phone company to go back 15 years to actually release his phone statements. Right? Serious allegation. If you're a public servant and if you've done nothing wrong and if your phone records from 15 years ago are going to show a series of calls after the fact between you and the victim, well, authorize the release of such records. If you're claiming that you received emails from her, 
Well, either produce the emails, which would, of course, show a lot. His email address, her email address, email provider information, IP address. Right? Emails would show the location, roughly, of where the emails were sent from, and who received them, and things like that. Right? What needs to be done here if we're going to be sleuths, if we're going to be detectives, is going to be to rigorously investigate this factual discrepancy. I suspect that if there's no proof that the two of them stayed in touch, if the story of how they stayed in touch gets murky, where their allegations that it wasn't by phone, it wasn't by email, rather it was by written letter, right? How would they have each other's snail mail address? Right? If the explanation is murky, then that's going to tell me who to believe here. Right? Again, she claims she never spoke to him again. Right? After an incident like this, I couldn't imagine she would want to be in contact with him in any way, shape, or form. Right? So, let's hope the Lieutenant Governor is challenged here. Right? Show us how she kept in touch with you for months. Give us the details authorize third parties to turn over the records. Give the press your information, your phone number from way back when, your email address from way back when. If you're claiming you gave her a business card and that she wrote you at the address on the business card, give us the business card or give us the job during that time frame that you had so that third parties can then investigate what business card you would have had and could then talk with the accuser about whether she ever wrote any correspondence. The truth is out there. The factual discrepancy gives us an opportunity to look into who's telling the truth about the discrepancy. Whoever is not is going to be less credible. Right? That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Understand, people all the time will issue political statements and will try to make themselves look as good as possible. Is the statement issued by Fairfax true? Or are there parts of it that are not? In my opinion, that needs to be investigated. Lieutenant Governor Fairfax, how exactly did the accused stay in touch with you? Let us know. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.